In this video, we're going to talk about the horizontal asymptotes of rational functions, but we're going to use something called limits to investigate them. So um, there's one thing you really need to kind of understand before we can dive into this, and uh, it's not that complicated, but let's say that we have a number k. So k is going to be uh, any real number. So it could be anything, positive, negative, it could be huge, it could be really small, it could be zero, it doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it by x to the n. Um, and now it's really important that n be uh, a real number that's greater than zero. So the reason for that is if n was negative, uh, then what would really happen is this thing wouldn't be k over x to the n. It would really be k times x to the, uh, I guess, absolute value of n, uh, which means that the x would be in the numerator, which is a different scenario. Uh, now here's what I claim. I claim that if um, x gets really, really big, then uh, eventually this quantity is going to effectively equal zero. And the way that I've always thought about this is, uh, suppose you had one cake, and you're going to share it with people. So if you share it with one person, uh, you know, you each get half. If you share it with ten people, uh, suddenly you're getting less. And if you share it with a thousand people, you get almost no cake. If you share it with a million people, you definitely get no cake. But we're talking about x getting bigger and bigger without bounds. So we're really talking about something called the limit as x approaches infinity. So the limit as x approaches infinity of k over x to the n is equal to zero, as long as k is a real number and n is greater than zero. So we're going to get zero. And just always think about that. You have one thing and you're going to share it with an infinite number of people. You're not going to get any of it. Um, so uh, you should also be able to figure out, I guess, that if x goes to negative infinity, we're also going to get zero. So the plus or the minus, it doesn't really matter. And just so you're clear, lim is uh, limit. And then x in that arrow and then infinity means x approaches infinity. So you want to be able to read these things correctly. And what that means is that x is just going to grow without bound. So it can get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, there's no limit to it. So it goes to infinity. So the reason we need to know that is we can find horizontal asymptotes. And you may already have memorized a bunch of rules. But where do those rules come from? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this function. I'm going to take its limit. And do the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x plus 3 over 3x minus 7. Now, the way you calculate this limit is you're going to look for the biggest power of x in the denominator. So that's x to the first. So in general, we're going to find the highest power of x in the denominator. We're going to divide everything we see by that highest power. But it's the highest power in the denominator. Okay, so that's going to be the rule that we use. And the reason we do that is it creates that um, sharing cake with an infinite number of people situation over and over. So highest power of x in the denominator is um, x to the first. So I'm dividing everything I see by that. So I get this, which is going to simplify down to uh, 2 plus 3 over x uh, over 3 minus 7 over x. So it's a limit as x to infinity of that. Now, if you look at that, um, we can stop writing the limit at this point because I'm now going to actually take the limit. So you're going to write the limit as long as there's an x in what you're writing after it. So uh, since at this point I'm actually taking limits, I'm going to stop writing limits. So I look at 2. 2 has no x in it, so x could do whatever it wants. That's just going to be 2. Um, 3 over x, if x goes to infinity, you're sharing 3 cakes with an infinite number of people. You still get nothing. Um, and then divided by 3 has nothing to do with x. And then 7 over x is going to give you 0 again. So this limit overall is 2 thirds, which is what you would have gotten if you took the ratio of the coefficients. And what that means is that y equals 2 thirds is the horizontal asymptote of this function. Okay, so that's one of the rules kind of explained, and that's the work that you would do to get it. Uh, what if we have this? So we have a lower power in the numerator than we have in the denominator. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. So it's the limit as x approaches infinity, of uh, 5x plus 3 over that whole thing, which is, so the highest power of x in the denominator is x squared. So I'm going to divide everything I see by x squared. So 5x over x squared, 3 over x squared, 4x squared over x squared, and so on. Uh, I'm going to simplify as much as I can. So I get 5 over x, 3 over x squared, 4, 2 over x, and 6 over x squared. So it's nice, if you divide by the highest power of x in the denominator, you guarantee that you're going to get a constant in your denominator, so you're never going to be dividing by 0, which is what we want to avoid. Um, so this will give me uh, 0 plus 0 over uh, 4 minus 0 plus 0, which is just 0. Um, and that's the reason that y equals 0 will be the horizontal asymptote 
in the situation where the degree of the numerator is less than the denominator, because that's always going to happen for you. Uh, but if you want to show the work, that's the work you would show. Let's take a look at one more. So we have a cubic over a quadratic. So we will set up the limit. We're going to divide by the highest power of x in the denominator, which is just x squared. So everything divided by x squared is going to give me um, 2x cubed over x squared, 3x over x squared. So it's a lot of writing uh, for a result that you already know, but that happens sometimes. So we get this, simplify it down. So something weird happens here. Um, we have 2x plus 3 over x minus 4 over x squared, and uh, in the denominator we have 1 minus 4 over x plus 1 over x squared. But we still have an x in the numerator of something, so it's not like we're dividing by x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece by piece and get, uh, I'm going to write this as the limit again. A uh, limit is x approached to infinity of 2x, and then everything else kind of either zeroes out or is a constant. So really, I just have the limit as x approached to infinity of 2x. Um, if x is approaching infinity, that means that uh, this function that I have left over is just approaching 2 times infinity. So that's going to be, I put equals infinity. Some people don't like that. So you might uh, find yourself putting quotes, or you might say approaches infinity. But it doesn't approach a number, which means that over time, the function doesn't level off um, horizontally. So that's the reason that you get no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's the reason that these rules exist. It involves limits, which for some reason aren't really a part of most Algebra 2 classes. Uh, well, because they don't really belong, but rational functions are a part. So I wanted you to understand that, and I hope you found this helpful. So good luck.